I'm Danica Patrick, and I'm Pretty Intense. We figured out once that men would live five years longer without the masculine role, because if you just take out of the statistics the deaths that are due to danger, speeding, tension. So I always say to audiences of men, you know, we can offer you more years of life. Who else can <laughs> do that? Do that, right, <laughs> right. And, and it's why, you know, there are, uh, you know, men are feminists too. Well, I mean, that's just the truth. There's masculine and feminine in every woman, and there's masculine and feminine in every man. And what it seems like is happening is that there's a, there's, I believe there's a shift to men getting more in touch with that feminine side of them um, and the woman of the masculine, right? Because the masculine yes, gets things done and goes and does it, and the feminine well, sits back and kind yeah, of, we're, you know, no, they're I both mean, powerful. We're becoming but, human. I mean, the whole idea of masculine and feminine is invented. I mean, so you know, how would so you describe certain energies then? Certain uh, human. I mean, I would. I don't know. I guess I would describe their content: mm -hmm. nurturing, patience. I don't know. You know, what mm -hmm. whatever the, the the quality is. But I th and sometimes I think the whole world is divided into two kinds of people: those who divide everything into two, and those who don't. <laughs> so I think it probably would be helpful to at least adventure into not dividing everything into two, because we aren't, actually. And, and now, and, and transgender and trans, you know, young people now who are identifying uh, with a, a, a group they are not viewed as being born into are very helpful, you know, because it's beginning to do away with those bipartite divisions. Do you think it's somewhat a, another, another division though? Like dividing the sections up even more? Or is it just about creating awareness that we're not all like, that we're not all one or this, like this or this? Well, <clears throat> I, you know, the first step is probably rejection of the existing divisions and then you try to find yourself. So, um, uh, I mean, I, 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 I know what you mean because I see, you know, on campuses I see young men, trans women, who are uh, wearing things that I wouldn't wear anymore, if you know what I mean, because, mm -hmm. it's because they seem too feminine. Mm -hmm. But that's just part of the process of change, probably, you know, exp exploring. Yeah, explain, explain to me, how, 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 how do you... How do you change the assumed roles, identity, mm. or just cultural understanding of something? Like, what does that process look like, and how long do you think well, that takes? Well, I, I think we're seeing it, don't you? I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, and it, you know, I'm way older than you, so I just want to say that in my life, <laughs> you were supposed to wear uh, skirts and frilly things, and you know, just. The fact that, that we wore pants when I was growing up was a rebellion. <laughs> uh, that we didn't wear lipstick, I don't know, was a That we didn't wear high heels was a People made endless fun of women's asses in pants when I was growing up because they were not supposed to wear pants. So <laughs> it's, it's uh, and men were supposed to be super macho in my neighborhood and all of that. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a process. 